So what is going on everybody, Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple finally released the first beta of the new year and we got iPadOS 14.4 beta 2 finally installed on the iPad Pro and I wanna walk you guys exactly what's new with it. So let's get it started. So before we get started, huge shout out to channel sponsor Paperlike for always keeping us protected, always keeping that screen anti-glare, and making the Apple Pencil experience just that much better, everybody. So first link in the description down below. But to get started with it, if I go into settings, I want to walk you guys through the actual build number. So again, we're on 14.4 and then beta 2. So before this, we had it ended in E, now we're on D. So as everybody knows, with these betas, the closer you get to A and getting rid of that final letter means the closer we are to the final release. So I think we're going to have at least two more betas and then probably an RC before we see 14.4 go out to everybody, to the entire public. And now if you're a public developer, it's also already released. And then in terms of actual size, this is a screenshot that I took right before I actually installed it. So it's about 350 megabytes. Give yourself at least 700 megabytes of space to actually download and install this thing because, again, you always want to double up on your storage to make sure that you have enough space to actually bring it all in. So it was about 400 or 350 megabytes in total for this installation and again normally with the size it kind of tells us and gives us a little precursor and foreshadows into what we're going to see so this is a pretty small update for an ipad especially the only real thing that was different that's even hard to show here because i could i don't have a bluetooth device that does this is for bluetooth apple has had a little bit of an issue or not even an issue they want to just get better at recognizing the different types of bluetooth devices that people use with their ios and ipad os devices so what they've done is if you go into bluetooth there's all these, obviously these are the info buttons, but if you go into one of your Bluetooth products that's a speaker or gives off noise that isn't a dedicated, let's say Apple product. So for instance, AirPods Pro or Apple and iOS and iPadOS, they know that AirPods Pro are headphones, right? They know that they're used for listening to music or listening to podcasts. So what they're trying to do is if you have, or maybe if you connect your iPad to your car via Bluetooth, or if you have a Bluetooth speaker, or if you have a device that's both a hearing aid and a speaker, what you can do now is go into the settings of that Bluetooth device and then label it as it's supposed to be. So if it's a Bluetooth speaker, label it as a Bluetooth speaker. If it's a hearing aid, label it as a hearing aid. If they're just regular headphones, label it as sort. If it's a car stereo, then the same thing. So basically what this does is it gives Apple just a little bit more data to, I guess, emphasize and enhance those different playing options because maybe the way you listen to sound through a hearing aid is obviously much different than how you listen to sound through a car. So maybe there's different settings that need to be touched on in order to get this done correctly. So that's the one thing that Apple added. And again, I can't even show you because all the products that I have are either built from Apple or, or they're not hearing devices, right? So I even tried with my compact keyboard. It's only for forget this device. So it only works if you have a hearing device or a listening device that is probably not an Apple product. And then that's how you're able to label that device. But other than that, that's pretty much it. The only thing I also want to go over is actual battery life. So if we go down to battery, go over my battery. So right now we're looking at about five hours and 28 minutes of screen on time, which really isn't that bad. And if I go over the last 10 days, we're looking at four hours and five minutes. So that's probably more of a actual representation of what my screen on time looks like with battery charge. So again, I'm always plugged into the Magic Keyboard, so it's a little bit tough to really see what the battery life is like because it's been a while since i used the ipad as purely just a tablet for an entire day i don't think i've gone a single day with that being the case so it's hard to really show off what the battery is like but for right now we're looking at about four hours of screen on time anywhere from four to five and a half hours so four to six hours of screen on time for a two-year-old ipad on the magic keyboard but those are all the differences that i saw that's the battery life let's go back to the normal view so as i was able to show everybody there wasn't really anything visually different about ipad os 14.4 beta 2. again we're going to towards a beta of an already there software which is 14.4 so we're not going to see any major changes usually the major physical changes you see on the first beta and then they just try to fix those those changes with the beta 2 3 4 until they're gold master or now they're release candidate. So beta two, the only thing you really saw was in that Bluetooth setting, which was even hard to show on the iPad because it's such a, a niche situation to kind of allow Apple to really get to know your devices and what you're connecting Bluetooth wise to both your iPad and your iPhone. So that was the only real visual difference. And over the next week, I'm gonna test out the battery life, test out the performance, and then get back to you guys with a little bit of a follow-up video to see if battery life improved. And again, I'm on the 2018 iPad Pro, so my battery life is already pretty diminished. So hopefully, this update kind of helps out a little bit, but that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, until next time.